In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today's um, obligatory memorial is that of St. Peter Claver, or Claver, priest, died in 1864. Um, he served the African slaves in his priestly ministry, but for 38 years, baptizing 300,000 in his life, in fact, more. Um, dedicating himself to us, slave and a slave of the slaves forever. Let us acknowledge our sins, especially in ways wherein there are aspects in our lives which block us from union with God, from having this or this zeal in proclaiming Jesus first to ourselves and of course to others. In view of the ultimate union with God, which is what God wants us to be and expects of us to become. And so we acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength for mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to be the contrite Lord of mercy. The Lord has mercy. He gave all sinners Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God, the Father, to intercede for us, Lord of mercy. The Lord has mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us all of our sins. And bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who made Saint Peter Lover a slave of slaves and strengthened him with one wonderful charity and patience as he came to their help, grant through his intercession that seeking the things of Jesus Christ, we may love our neighbor in deeds and in truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever in A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast. For an ob obligation has been imposed on me. And woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense. But if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with the stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge 
so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. I have become all things to all, to save at least one some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. Do you not know that the runners in the stadium all run in the race? but only one wins the prize so as so as to win it run so as to win every athlete exercises discipline in every way they do it to win a perishable crown but we an imperishable one Thus, I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight as if I were shadow boxing. No, I drive my body and train it for fear that after having preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. The word of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest, in which she puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed they, they who dwell in your house, continually they praise you. Blessed the man whose strength you are. Their hearts are set upon the pilgrimage. For a son and a shield is the Lord God. Grace and glory he bestows. The Lord withholds no good things from those who walk in sincerity. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. Hallelujah, ah, hallelujah. Your word, O Lord, is truth. Consecrate us in the truth. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> a reading from a proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, Lord. 
Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove a splinter in your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite! Remove the wooden beam from your eye first, and then you will clearly uh, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. What's the question that is most repeated each day as a general pattern anywhere in the world? And the question or questions open repeated anywhere in the world is who, what, when, where, how, isn't it? For example, an accident happens, who got involved? Who were the people in the, in the vehicle? When did the accident happen? What or why? How did it happen? These are the questions repeated and repeated from sunrise to sunset, whether spoken or just in the silence of our hearts. And why is this so? Why do we ask the question or these questions? And the answer is because each one, the human mind, seeks for what is true and good and correct or righteous. We seek for veritas, truth. In today's gospel, we have the question from Jesus. Can a blind person guide a blind person? And of course, we know what the answer is. And the answer is no. But Jesus says it there. Otherwise, both will fall into a pit. Now, what is at the heart, what is at the core of today's gospel reading or the message starting from the first? where St. Paul preached not for his glory, but the glory of God. 
what is at the heart of what Jesus is asking when he asked the question can a blind person guide a blind person and the answer of course again is no in other words what blocks us if we ask questions who what when where how in view of truth what prevents us from reaching from being one with veritas with truth what prevents us according to Jesus of course and the answer is Sin is I in. That prevents us from being one with veritas, with truth. And it's not just a matter of in the realm of what is spiritual, in the realm of day to day living. we cannot anymore perceive properly or appropriately what truth is all about because of sin and the constancy of sinning. And that's why in, relig in relation to Jesus's Ministry of Healing Almost always he would say at the end It's a kind of a punch line Go and sin no more What for? So that you Or each one Me included each one can make the right choices, the good decisions. Because we are perceiving clearly veritas. It's not only that we are perceiving, we also have the strength, the strength to reach out to what is true and good and righteous. Having said all of this, what's the antidote? What would be the way or ways we're in? We can go back more and more in our journey to the way, the truth, and the light. Who is Jesus? Who is the good news? Who manifests or who shows us as the reign of God? What must we do therefore to Avoid the blocks from seeking the truth. Because we know it on the basis of human experience that when we fail to grasp and to seek and to be one with the truth, that's where depression comes, among others. That's why in fact um, we study healing and deliverance and exorcism, depression is one of the de demonic spirits. It's not a good spirit. 
And so what must we do? Jesus, God, teaches us in and through the, in and through the church. Number one, we engage in awareness, consciousness, examine. Or, simply put, examination of conscience. Daily. We can un underline that word, daily. Especially at the end of day. Is that enough? No. The other one is, in order to respond to the way of cleansing one's temple, or in order to be open to our prayer when we say, Lord, create a clean heart in me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. What must we do? Confession. See these things that I'm saying, it's nothing new. They've been taught to us since the time of Jesus in the last 2,000 years in the great tradition of our faith, of our church. Where will this bring us? To the way, the truth, and the life who is Jesus. And what is at the core, at the foundation, what is central to this journey? Because it is a journey. What is at the base of all of this? In other words, what are we seeking? Not just as our goal later, but right now. It nunc here and now. Union with God. And when this happens, when truth becomes a way or the way of living, there is clarity of mind and heart. There is clarity in terms of decision making. And therefore, which means preceded by good choices. And no matter what, because of this, you and I will become a counter culture to the culture of the world, the flesh, and the devil. And so, what happens? Like Jesus, like Saint Paul, like the martyrs and the saints, we will suffer. Like the prophets who were beheaded, like Saint, like Saint John the Baptist, we will suffer. But that suffering becomes redemptive like the suffering of Jesus on the cross because our being one with the truth is more letter T will make us one with the truth capital T our being will become small p will become one with the being capital P who is God our human will small w will become one with the Divine Will, capital W. What is the byproduct of this? This is the road map. And this is the pathway of Jesus. And so Jesus now becomes our guide. And so we will be able to make it because in carrying the cross, 
Jesus will help us to carry the cross. And Jesus to us will not just be our Savior, capital S. A Savior just like Simeon who helped Jesus on the road to Calvary. This is where our reflection leads us so that hopefully with God's grace we become blind no more. Please rise. We continue to pray for our Holy Father, for all cardinals, bishops, priests, deacons, religious men and women, and the lay faithful involved in the ministry, whatever form ministry in the church, and the lay faithful who are members of the church and the entire world for a great conversion of their way to truth, to the truth of God. For this we pray to the Lord. We continue to pray, to pray for peace in so many areas of troubled countries throughout the world. The peace that comes from the Lord. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are perhaps discouraged in seeking the truth of God. Those who are lost and those who have stopped seeking the Lord. That they will be touched by God's grace to stand up and walk and continue the journey a journey that leads to God. For this we pray to the Lord. For a great conversion of humankind. For God's great harvest of souls consequent to faith and repentance and conversion. For this we pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed for their eternal rest. For those, the forgotten ones in terms of people, those who have no body, now praying for them. Those in most need of God's mercy, for them we pray to the Lord. And for our intentions in this holy sacrifice of the Mass, that the Lord will answer our prayers for God's greater glory. For this we pray to the Lord. And we pray for Carolyn Gray for the intention of good health. For this we pray to the Lord. All these heavenly Father we ask through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, who created us in your The bread we offer you through the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. O deliverers we have received, Lord. The wine we offer you for the divine work of your hands has been become our spiritual life. Praise sisters and brothers, that their sacrifice may now become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And God has set aside for the for the creation of the Lord of the Lord of the Lord. Receive, O Lord, we pray the offerings placed in your altar in commemoration of St. Peter Clever. So that you brought, as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous things you make your church with strength ever new, and of us your signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, the great example leads us courage, and the prayer, prayer sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, we all the angels and saints, to give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy. You are indeed holy, Lord, and all you have created rightly gives praise for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be open to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that has commanded. We celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Thanks, all you that eat of, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when Sabo was ended, he took a chance. And giving thanks, he said a blessing and gave a chance to his disciples, saying, Thanks, all you will bring from for this is the chance of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, save the other world. For by your power, save your resurrection, you. <clears throat> Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, is one with the resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim of the you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elements especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, your blessed spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter, lover, and with all the saints and his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for a failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation with you, Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity of Pilgrim Church on earth. For your servant Francis our Pope and Myron our Bishop, the order of bishops of the clergy and the entire people, you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you from at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. I say your strength. And for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and grace to grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always reconciled and safe from all his Christ, as we await a blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Amen. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said your heart. Peace, I give you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Holy and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer to each one God's hand and peace. A new day, we do this before the Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper on the Lamb.
Let us pray. <clears throat> may partaking, may partaking uh, up at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from night. In all, celebrate the feast of Saint Peter Clover, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us. Draw who cries our Lord. In view of our response or one of our responses to the United States Capitol Conference and Bishop School or Bishop in the United States for our Eucharistic revival. We have a meeting, a meeting here since 15 this evening. Our third and final meeting, everyone is invited. Because this is not just an activity of a particular group or this or that, but of everyone of the Paris. So that we can have, we can respond to the Eucharistic revival effort of all bishops in the United States in the context where in 70 and more percent of some 70 plus million Catholics no longer believe in the Eucharist. So we have a meeting in order to improve our content and our format and our process of our Thursday evening weekly adoration, which will now start, which will start on October 6th from 5.30 and and at 7.30, so to our adoration. So we are improving from, we extend from one hour to two hours. And part of this is we have our Holy Communion. There is confession open for those who really want to go. There is a 10 minute input. There is a four to five minutes adoration in silence and so on. So, you are all invited. The Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless you all. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Be one in the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary. Christ. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of the name of Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and for our lives. Saint Michael, we are protected, defend us in battle. We are protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him and be humble. And do thou our prayers in the living world, for the power of God casts into the Savior, in all the universe.